good morning people so here we are with another such amazing video for you guys so if you like our videos you subscribe to our channel hit like comment and share our videos so here we go now it is given there that there are only five industries where industry license is required now you should remember these five sectors where licensing is still required so even post 1991 though many industries licensing was abolished or all every deregulation delicensing like these things but still in certain sectors industrial license is required go through the names once aerospace and defense industrial explosives hazardous chemicals for example these are given including uh, isocyanates that is methyl isocyanate for what purpose this methyl isocyanate is popular uh, is Bo bhopal gas tragedy bhopal gas tragedy so in that bhopal gas tragedy this uh, particular gas was there chemical was there okay then uh, cigar cigarettes tobacco these uh, and finally alcoholic drinks these are five sectors where still licensing is required they are linked to security, strategic and environmental concerns. So you should remember these names question can be asked. So tell what all the sectors where you need go through them, go through the names once again and then tell the names. See very strategic sector these are space and defense, aerospace and defense, industrial explosives. Hazardous chemicals, cigars, cigarettes, tobacco, and alcoholic drinks. Now, it also includes dual use, having military as well as civilian application. It is not like if a civilian application that also is military use that will not be licensed. No, that will also need the licensing. So, tell the names. Industrial exposures. Industrial exposures. Mm -hmm. Right, next. Uh, Cigarette tobaccos. Yeah, cigarettes and tobacco products and uh, correct. Then come to next, that is sectors reserved for public sector. Now there are two sectors which are still reserved for public sectors. Now these are different things. Earlier it was that needs license to start. So even if a private company is to come in that needs the license but here these are only reserved for public sector two sectors atomic energy secondary yeah. railway operations not only simple railway railway operations yeah. okay so which two sectors are reserved for public sector only atomic and, uh, and railways IIP, we have done it earlier as well, published by CSO, 2004 5 is the base year. The national manufacturing policy. So, this national manufacturing policy, it envisages to increase share of manufacturing GDP to 25 percent and creating 100 million jobs over a decade. Right, so by 2025, the share of manufacturing to be increased to around 25 percent, and how many jobs? 100 million jobs. So this information you can use somewhere in mains exam. How much is the percentage of manufacturing right now to GDP? How much is the present share of manufacturing in GDP? Around 16, 17 percent. Okay. And how much is it going to be? 25% of it is going to be. Economic survey may be many, in many articles it also comes. Then NIMZ, National Manufacturing Investment Zone. So this National Investment and Manufacturing Zones, this is something to create some industrial township, integrated industrial township, which have very easy rules or easy exit policy, 
easy entry, moreover, uh, relaxed labor laws, right? And uh, means the process, ease of doing business, so smooth there, it reduces the cost of doing business and makes them to makes the industry to come and invest and flourish themselves. So see, national investment and manufacturing zone, right? So see the paragraph there. It and I am jailed have been considered a large integrated industrial township with state of the art infrastructure, land use on the basis of zoning, clean energy efficient technology, social infrastructure, skill development facilities. So these are basic features of NIMJ. So eight investment reasons along DMIC. Now DMIC project, DMIC project, Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. So you should just remember along where it is going through across the now once we will build up Delhi Mumbai Freight Corridor. So along the Delhi Mumbai Freight Corridor, this Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor will also be established. Where all it will be? You can see this one uh, Manesar Bawalan Investment Region, Haryana, then uh, Nimrana. So different different places, the industrial township shall be established, and along it. The investment shall be attracted. Come to next, make in India. Make in India four pillars. So just how there were uh, pillars of digital India. Correct. So question can be asked: pillars of make in India. Now these pillars you may not have have heard somewhere, right? So you should be able to remember these pillars. Four pillars: new process, new infrastructure, new sectors, and new mindset. So new process means. It recognizes ease of doing business. New infrastructure means industrial corridors, world class infrastructure, state of the art technology, these kind of the infrastructure. New sectors means more opening of sectors for FDI and all. New mindset, ultimately, government to act as a facilitator rather than a regulator. Because mindset of the government, people, they had been something to regulate, but now, Government is to ensure to work as a facilitator, to work to facilitate the companies and industries rather than having the mindset of regulating them. So, what are the four pillars? Right, so process, infra, sectors, and mindset. In process, age of doing business. Infra, state of the art infrastructure, sectors, more sectors for FDA and all, mindset that is government to act as facilitator. So, if you see ease of doing business, new process, so everything will be will come under ease of doing business. See, there are so many initiatives by the government that reduces the cost of doing business that will come under ease of doing business. For example, EBS portal, it is uh, ease of doing business. Or government going for uh, easy or online environmental clearances, easy inspection schemes, or online inspections, or something uh, online or self certification. So all these are ease of doing business. The investor facilitation cell. This investor investor facilitation cell is to help the investors. So all these will be part of this. So DMIC, DMIC is built with the help of which country? Keep on scrolling downwards. 470, DMIC, Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. With the help of Japan, this corridor is, be, is being built. Then Chennai, Bangalore, Bangalore, Chennai Corridor. So again, Japan. Then Bangalore, Mumbai. United Kingdom is uh, saying that it will invest here. Amritsar, Kolkata. Then this Amritsar, Kolkata corridor to be structured around eastern dedicated freight corridor. And the inland water system is also to be. Then east coast economy corridor. So east coast. So it is with the help of Asian Development Bank. And linking Kolkata, Chennai to Tikorin. So this is the 
these are the places across which this east coast economic corridor shall be built kolkata chennai tutikore then for an fda policy change in 2015 uh, just remember insurance sector 49% pension sector 49% because other policy changes have been happened recently and so it becomes important for the question you have done it already regarding that how much in aviation sector how much in defense right how much in defense is presently as per new fda policy changes uh, 49% under automatic route it can go up to 100% Depending okay yeah it, it was it was my, as per earlier close it it said that if it brings modern and state of the art technology but now the state of the art it has been removed it is only now modern technology so up to 49% automatic above 49% up to 100% it can be there if there is modern technology is coming to india so just remember in insurance 49% 26% automatic above it government approval same is with pension fd flows in industrial sector so if you see uh, india in the last one year in the number one country india has become number one country in terms of fdi inflows even surpassing china so in terms of remittances in terms of fdis we are the world leaders now okay so if you talk about the last one decade which sectors have received maximum fdi then at number 1 it is service sector then construction then telecom and then automobile so there is a sequence of these that is service construction telecom and automobile come to page number 479 invest india now invest india is what and again to showcase that india is a uh, investors destination to attract investors and to come to india and to help them in the investment here so now invest india is a joint venture between dipp fikki and state governments right so question can be asked remember invest india joint venture between dipp fikki and state government So invest india to act as a first point of reference to provide inputs on all aspects of doing business in india guiding investors on all policy it means when any investor comes to india the person the company doesn't know much about indian environment how to uh, work here in indian environment in the industry and all so this will help hand holding exercise like these are the clearance in this you can get the clearance so helping them in all the way so that this investment becomes smooth so there are different activities are taken under this one is investor facilitation cell so under make in india there is investor facilitation cell to help facilitate the investor in the investment then country focus desk there are various desk focusing on the countries which are major uh, countries in terms of investment to india working with state governments then sectoral investment make in india pavilions just remember in brief that's it come to ipr now new ipr policy the government ha- government has announced just see what all iprs are that is patents trademarks gi that is geographical indication industrial designs layout designs of integrated circuits plant variety and copyright so all these are iprs go through them once again come to page number 
दैट इज सीमेंट इंडस्ट्री सीमेंट इंडस्ट्री थर्ड पैराग्राफ फर्स्ट लाइन इंडिया सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट मैनुफैक्चर ऑफ सीमेंट आफ्टर चाइन इन द वर्ल्ड दिस इज ओनली इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक यू नीड टू टेक इन अनदर थिंग अबाउट सीमेंट इंडस्ट्री दैट इट इज वन ऑफ द इट इज वेरी लार्ज एमिटर ऑफ ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज ओके लार्जेस्ट एमिटर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दिस पावर जनरेशन राइट एनर्जी सेक्टर सो एनर्जी सेक्टर इज द लार्जेस्ट सेक्टर ऑफ एमिशन कंट्रीब्यूटिंग यस सीमेंट इज वन ऑफ द लार्ज इट कम्स इन द टॉप फाइव ओके हाउ इट हैपन्स इज सीमेंट वट इज द रो मटीरियल यूज और कंपोनेंट यूज कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट राइट लाइम स्टोन एंड ओल कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट मीन्स सी एस सीओ थ्री सो इट वेन इट गोज इन अंडर द कम्बेशन ओल एक्टिविटीज हैपन सो इट कम्स टू सी ओ एंड सी ओ टू सो डायरेक्टली कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कम्स इन टू यूर एज एन एमिशन सो इट इज अ वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट वेरी लार्ज सेक्टर दैट कंट्रीब्यूट इन टू ग्रीन हाउस गैस एमिशन then come to water pollution control equipment page number 499 it tells about different ways how water pollution is controlled so it talks about this treatment and this treatment process removing contaminants includes physical chemical and biological process so different kind of the contaminants physical chemical and biological contaminants and removing of these it needs physical chemical and biological content biological process now how the happens for the primary treatment it involves removal of pollutants so that settle or float so there are certain pollutants contaminants that settle or float so that are removed at the initial stage then in secondary treatment the biological contents of the seaways they are degraded the degradation of biological contents so the equipments used are activated sludge filters biological reactors no need to remember them much just i need to understand environmentally how an environment question can be asked how water treatment can happen right so even biological degradation helps in that to contaminate the biological contempt to uh, filter out or remove the biological contaminants then tertiary treatment polishing step to remove contaminants that missed in the primary secondary treatment and removal of suspended solid refractory organics and toxic components just read through uh, go through them once that's it now organisms such as bacteria fungi yeast and algae that are commonly used to break down the organic matter so question can be which of the following organisms are used to break down organic matter for purification of water so you should remember bacteria fungi yeast and algae come to page number 503 indian textiles so indian textile the thing to remember is that textile sector is second largest provider of employment after agriculture so see the importance of this indian textile sector so largest employer agriculture second largest textile right so another importance of textile if you remember in the top 5 exporters in the top 5 export commodities top 5 export goods indian textile was one of them correct first one petroleum products secondly gems and jewelry third textile so if you remember our discussion in from economic survey in the labor chapter labor reform chapter it was given that now present nowadays uh, the textile industry that is a garment industry is shifting to the tier 2 and tier 3 cities right why they are shifting because here in the major cities metro cities and these uh, cities uh, they have to they have to give the more money for the wages right so the cost of expenditure increases and the garment industry these industries employment intensive it is not capital intensive so major part of the product finished good caters to the wages 
so once they are shifting to tier 2 and tier 3 towns it is carrying the employment suitable employment to the women because basically women they get employed in textile industry so the women of those tier 2 towns they will get the employment in their nearby areas so it will help in the empowerment of those women in tier 2 and 3 towns and cities cotton so our textile industry is predominantly cotton based jute also known as golden fiber right for safe packaging renewable biodegradable eco-friendly product it is silk there are four varieties of silk now india is the second largest producer of silk in the world and probably the first one is china so there are four varieties of silk remember them mulberry tussar eri and muga mulberry accounts for maximum 74 percent so the four varieties of silk so tell four varieties of silk mulberry tussar eri and muga these are four Then Maharatna scheme, page number 509. So the condition for Maharatna, difference between Maharatna and Navratna, and which companies are Maharatna. So as the status actually gives them more autonomy. So apart from the Navratna, the uh, certain autonomy in Navratna, certain more autonomy is given in Maharatna status companies. So you can see the highlighted part there. So, in addition to having Navratna powers, additional powers have been given to them in areas of joint venture investment and human resource development. So now they can go for, uh, in their own independent way, investment in joint ventures or acquisition of certain subsidiaries and all, and development of human resources. Moreover, they can invest 5,000 crore rupees in one project and create below board level post up to E9 level. So they can create more posts at the higher level as well and can go for investment by taking the own uh, autonomous decisions up to this level, 5000 crore in one project. So just have a brief understanding. They can go for joint venture investment, human resource development, more investment, top post even can be uh, brought out by them independently. So more additional powers apart from Navratana are given to Maharatna companies. Now there are seven public sector companies which are given Maharatna status. Go through them once. BHEL, Coal India, Gale, Indian Oil Corporation, NTPC, ONGC, SAIL. So all these are important companies. Just remember the Maharatna, right? If the question comes about Navratna, so apart from these will be Navratna, main companies. So go through the names once again. BHEL. Yes. So see, once Coal India is there, NTPC is there. NTPC will use the coal for power generation. A BPCL is Navratna. Okay. This is how to see, remember? A few I can just let you know. Coal India and NDPC. They both are linked. And uh, yes. Linked to power in the sense NTPC they use coal for generation of power, generation of electricity. Right? Then uh, sale definitely important. Steel is very important part, is a very basic industry. Then linked to the gas and uh, oil, we have IOCL. ONGC and for the pipeline network we have Gale, then BHEL. That's all. These are the Navratna companies. 16 are Navratna companies. You can go through them once, but no need to remember all. So BEL, BPCL, Engineers India Limited, Hindustan Aeronautics, Hindustan Petroleum, MTNL. National Aluminium, Nalco, then uh, Building Construction Corporation, Nivelli Lignite, 
and DMC All India, all these companies are there. CSR has been made uh, mandatory under Companies Act, two percent of the average net profit of the preceding three years. Come the steel in steel. Last year the question was asked which of the following materials linked to the steel industry is imported. Coking coal was one of the options that is imported by India because coking coal is high quality coal that India does not produce. So we import it from Australia. Now in steel you find there uh, one of the highlighted points that India is leading producer of sponge iron. and important producer pig iron as well so in the turn out to be net exporter of pig iron so both pig iron and sponge iron india's leading producer five and three five and four come to five and four global ranking of indian steel now china is the largest producer of crude steel and accounting for 50 percent of world crude steel production See how dominating China is here in steel production. So 50% of the world crude steel is produced by China alone. And steel is a basic industry that provides backward linkage to so many other industries. And India is the fourth largest. So if you talk about China's uh, accounting, it is 73% uh, of the Asia and 50% of the world. You see then China, 823 metric tons. China, then Japan, then US, and then India. Just remember the top four. China, then Japan, US, and India. And maximum China, 50% of the world production. Ten fifteen minutes. Yeah. And come to page number five thirty. Five three zero. Gold. See right, so you can find where gold is found there. Come to uh, page number 533, diamond. So where diamond is found. So we have the diamond since prehistoric times. Okay, and where old diamond is found, maximum diamond is found in MP in the Panna belt. Right. Are you there on page number 533? Diamond since prehistoric times in the country four major eight, four major location maximum in mp in the panna belt you have then other in andhra chhattisgarh in andhra you have important places like anandpur kadappa kadappa as kadappa you know in bahubali movie if you remember right <laughs> so it's a name they call it guntur krishna mahbubnagar kurnool these are important places where Diamond is found in Andhra. Third, Chhattisgarh in the Bastar district. Then on the eastern India, you have in Odisha, lying between Mahanadi and Godavari valleys. So four, four major locations where you find a diamond. So maximum 90% in MP. MP accounts for about 90% resources, followed by Andhra, and then Chhattisgarh. Correct? So, what are the places? MP. In MP, where? Panna. Panna Belt, yes. Panna Tiger Reserve, you may have heard. Mm. Then in Andhra, then in Chhattisgarh, Bastar district, then between Manadri and Godavari valleys in Odisha. Geological Survey of India, what it does? 
जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे जियोलॉजिकल सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया मीन्स इट इज अर्थ साइंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन राइट सो वेयर विच मिनरल टू बी फाउंड एट वर्क प्लेस दिस काइंड ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन बिकॉज इट स्टडीज द अर्थ साइंस जियोलॉजी जियो मीन्स अर्थ दैट्स ऑल कम टू नेक्स्ट चैप्टर फाइव फोर्टी फोर लो एंड जस्टिस so law and justice okay the legislative powers to governor general it was given by which act it was given by charter act of 1833 okay so though indian legis uh, indian legislature were given the power of this legislation by uh, government of india in 1919 but before this government of india government of india 1919 the governor general was enacting legislations for india okay then by this 1919 act our indian legislature got the power to enact laws and by 1935 more powers were given to our indian legislature so just remember by this charter act of 1833 legislative powers were given to governor general of council so governor general of council because executive council was there for governor general so governor general of council was acting as a legislative body so certain things you can read by yourself or you can read this thing actually in uh, your own lakshmikant polity book supreme court for example he says in the earlier times when uh, india was colony of britain at that time federal okay the very much relevant to supreme court it was federal court during british time that was established by government of india 1935 okay but even during that time the highest court of appeal was not federal court it was british privy council so highest court of appeal was british privy council but once supreme court was established post independence then supreme court got the both of the powers powers vested in federal court also privy council powers means of highest court of appeal power so read by yourself high court supreme court as uh, just part of your uh, polity syllabus for example in supreme court the qualification what it says then removal removal as so removal of judge of supreme court removal of judge of high court same way right In the same way, the both are removed. Tenure or hold office, Supreme Court judge up to age of sixty-five years, High Court judge up to sixty-two years. So now, High Courts does High Court has superintendence over all courts and tribunals within its state? Yes. yes. Yeah, correct. But. in general sense you can say this thing that high courts they have superintendence over all courts and tribunals within its jurisdiction come to certain forces now various enforcement agencies are given for example itbp you have done it in one of the earlier class different security forces and their mandates now it is a part of syllabus in ds mains part paper 3 various security agencies and their mandates itbp what it does it guards the borders of india china india china borders so itbp india china borders bsf it guards which borders pakistan. india pakistan and india bangladesh right assam rifles India, Myanmar. India, China. तो आपका हो गया है ITBP. India, Myanmar, Assam Rifles. So Assam Rifles they have dual role. One is guarding borders of India, Myanmar. Moreover, uh, maintaining peace and security within North Eastern region. So North Eastern region peace and security work task is also given to Assam Rifles. So the Assam Rifles they are also called Sentinel of the North East. 
and friends of hill people it's on page number 557 assam rifles i keep on scrolling down crpf now crpf they are basically given uh, any kind of the work they are given so many different vast kind of the work actually mending the peace stability in the various region in various affected regions for example naxal affected regions they are also sent to the they are also in jammu and kashmir in the different kind of the work it is given to crpf in the disaster management as well certain of their uh, uh, platoons were also sent to the at the international missions as well they have been deployed internationally at kosovo haiti and sri lanka and for the first time in the history of un they fully formed women's unit is posted in liberia as a part of un peacekeeping mission so they also go in the un peacekeeping mission right so crpf also goes there and women uh, women's unit first time it is sent there in this mission so they also participate in relief rescue and rehabilitation efforts in the disaster management battalions rapid action force now rapid action force it does each and everything if the question comes sab sare kaam karta hai there are so many variety of things to do you see communal problems militants in jammu and kashmir insurgency in northeast overseas deployment for un peacekeeping missions ye bhi karta hai then cyclone relief work various kind of the disaster management human congregation like amarnath yatra jagannath sab sare kaam diye gaye naxalism in left wing extremist affected states except guarding borders so except guarding borders it is involved in uh, maximum kind of the task cisf so cisf basically guarding or providing security to key installations of the government but now it is no longer psu centric organizations right it has become a premier skilled security agency of the country to provide security to major critical infrastructure installations of the country in diverse region including terrorist and naxal affected area so basically provide security to the various organizations critical security criti- critical infrastructure and not only the public sector centric the various installations which are important from their strategic interest point of view or very, which are very critical in fact they are also being given security by cisf ssb ssb it provides it guards the borders of india nepal and india bhutan home guards aapko pata hai voluntary force hai to assist the police and the state government civil authorities that's it kitna hi dekhna hai iske andar anand marriages for sikh marriages yanand marriages something sikh marriages delimitation read from the polity part delimitation constituencies that's all from this chapter okay so that's all for today's class if you like this video you hit like and subscribe to our channel as well so that you get notification automatically whenever we bring new videos if you want us to bring more such amazing videos for you people you comment on the below section thank you see you soon